Hello everyone. This is image 11 for the Intraoral Radiology Interpretation Seminar for the D3 students at the University of Minnesota School of Dentistry. In this video, we are going to review a dense bone island. Let's start with one periapical radiograph. A dense bone island is a frequent radiographic finding and frequently misinterpreted. Therefore, it is important that we learn how to identify a dense bone island and if it requires any kind of surgical intervention. This radiograph was taken in May 2020. On this mandibular peripical radiograph, we see a well-defined radio opacity around the apex of the first premolar. The outline of the root is faintly visible. The outline of the radio opacity is distinct and smooth. This mass has homogeneous or uniform density. The tooth is not curious, no restoration, and no history of trauma. The patient is asymptomatic. This was an incidental finding on a panoramic radiograph, which prompted the doctor to order this periapical radiograph for better evaluation. Let's review the panoramic radiograph. This is the panoramic radiograph which was obtained on the same day in May 2020. On this panoramic radiograph, we still see the same radiographic features. Let's zoom to the area of the premolar. So we have uniform density. The pedial spaces of the premolar are better visible on this panoramic radiograph compared to what we saw on the periapical film. The margin is still well defined. This is the mental foramen and it does not appear to be compressed. The root of the premolar may be slightly distally displaced. Compare this with the premolar on the other side. We have a few older panoramic radiographs. Let's review those. So this is a radiograph from May 2016. Again, let's zoom to the area of the premolar. Interestingly, at this time, we do not see the radiopacity. The trabecular bone around this incompletely formed root of the premolar seems normal. We have one more radiograph taken two years after this panoramic radiograph. So this is from May 2018. Again, let's zoom to the area of the premolar. Now we can see the radiopacity forming around the apex of the premolar. It is circular, almost homogeneous, and well-defined. This may have a little less density than what we saw on the radiograph of 2020. So this is the radiograph of 2020. Let's review this on a CBCT scan. This will give us a better understanding of the process. Specifically, we want to see if this mass is affecting the cortical plates, whether it's expanding the cortical plates or eroding. So this is the CBCT scan of the same patient. This blue line indicates the slice here. So on this slice, we can see that this is the labial cortical plate and this is the lingual cortical plate. Here we have the radio opacity probably arising from the buccal cortical plate and reaching the lingual cortical plate. You can still see the apical pedial space intact. The radio opacity is almost homogeneous with little lesser density at the center, what appears to be a sort of a ground glass appearance. We saw that there is no expansion of the cortical plates and there is no perforation. If we go on the axial slices, we can see similar finding. Let me magnify this. This is the area of the radio opacity and we not, do not see any expansion of the cortical plates, whether the buccal or the lingual compared to the other side. So this is a dense bone island. The dense bone island has different names. It's also known as idiopathic osteosclerosis. It can also be called as an enostosis. Enostosis is the internal counterpart of exostosis. An exostosis or a torus is on the outside of the cortical plate and enostosis is on the inner aspect of the cortical plate. What's the location of a dense bone island? These are more common in the mandible and mostly in the premolar and molar areas. It can be anywhere. It can be in other bones, other bones of the skeleton. It does not have to be in the jaws. The border and the density of the dense bone island, they are always well-defined borders. And this is one of the critical features for your interpretation. The outline can be smooth 
or irregular. The density is mostly radiopaque. In early stages, it can have ground glass density, as we saw in our case. What it can do to the adjacent structures? The tooth is vital. We saw that the pedial space was not widened. Actually, the pedial space was within normal limits. In some cases, you may see root resorption or displacement of the root. It may affect the eruption of a tooth. If the dense bone island is near the inferior alveolar canal, the canal is not displaced or compressed. The differential diagnosis of a dense bone island includes several conditions. First is sclerosing osteitis. Second is peripical cementoosseous dysplasia. Hypercementosis may also be confused as a dense bone island. Finally, it could also be a cementoblastoma. So let's review quickly how to differentiate these four conditions. If you follow the blessed format of description, it will be easier for you to differentiate. To review the blessed format, please watch a different video in this series. Sclerosing osteitis is seen with a non-vital tooth, and this is the area of sclerosing osteitis. The pedial space is wide, and the border of the radiopacity is fuzzy. The density is mixed. There are some areas of radiolucency, some areas of radiopacity. In case of dense bone island, the radiopacity was homogeneous or uniform. A peripical cementoosseous dysplasia is also easy to identify. In the later stage of peripical cementoosseous dysplasia, there is irregular radiopacities surrounded by an irregular radiolucent band. The cementoosseous dysplasia is most common in middle-aged females of African descent. A tooth with a cementoblastoma can be symptomatic, while an area of dense bone island is symptom-free. A cementoblastoma can be circular or oval, surrounded by a band of radiolucency followed by a radiopaque band. In case of dense bone island, there is no radiolucent band. Similar to a dense bone island, the roots with a cementoblastoma may be resorbed. We had reviewed hypercementosis in a previous video. A hypercementosis is a well-defined homogeneous radiopacity. This radiopacity is continuous with the root. There is no demarcation between the root and the area of the hypercementosis. We can actually trace the pedial space around the outline of the hypercementosis. The density is similar to the tooth structure, similar to dentin, and the root does not appear to be resorbed. Thank you very much. Please come back again for another video. See you soon.